بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, this is my final reflection during this uh, blessed month of Ramadan uh, 2021 of the common era 1442 after the hijra uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, accept our actions our salawat our siyam our qiraat and bless our community May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the MCC. Uh, please support the MCC. It is an extraordinary organization uh, with extraordinary people. Um, they serve our community in beautiful ways. Uh, support them in any way uh, that you can. Um, I just want to say that as my parting advice, don't live your life in fear of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tie your camel, as the hadith says, and trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffices you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Whoever places their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffices him. We live in a time when our religion, our faith, and our beliefs are becoming more and more, um, I guess you can say, culturally unacceptable. <clears throat> and it seems like this is just going to get worse. This idea of wokeness is kind of taking over in a, in a major way and creating this cancel culture that seeks to eradicate uh, whatever it deems to be offensive, right? And of course, we know that the Quran, it takes certain theological and moral stances uh, that many people will be offended by. Um, we cannot allow ourselves to be intimidated. Uh, remember the, the the advice of the Prophet وسلم, when he said, "Aman tu billah, thumma staqim." Right, A very beautiful hadith uh, where he says, um, "Believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and be upright, be steadfast upon that." Don't be afraid. Face the world with courage uh, and, uh, um, and a confident faith. <inaudible> Speak the truth even if it's bitter. <inaudible> and do not be afraid of those who reproach you for your faith. Life is too short to let the mob scare you into selling out your religion. After the Battle of Uhud, the hypocrites in Medina tried to scare the Sahaba. Right, they're quoted in the Quran. Inna nasa qad jamu lakum fakhshohum. Indeed, the people are gathering against you. Right, so be afraid of them. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us, "Fazadhum imana." This only increased the faith of the Sahaba. Waqalu hasbun Allah, wa ni'ma al wakil. And and God so. Uh, this only increased their faith, and they said, God suffices us. What an excellent guardian he is. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That if God helps you, no one can overcome you. And if he forsakes you, then who can help you uh, thereafter? And in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the believers place their trust. It is related um, that Imam Ali al-Ridha, who was the great, 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 great grandson of the Prophet sallallahu he once visited a certain town and hundreds of people surrounded him and asked him for a gem of wisdom and to give them uh, solace. So he said, I heard from my father, Musa al qadim who heard from his father, Ja'far al-Sadiq, who heard from his father, Muhammad al-Baqir, who heard from his father, Zainul al-Abideen, who heard from his father, Hussein ibn Ali, who heard from his father, Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wajhah, who heard from his father-in-law, the Prophet sallallahu who heard from Jibril alayhi salam, who heard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah, hisni. وَمَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ بِصِدْقٍ دَخَلَ حُسْنِ وَمَنْ دَخَلَ حُسْنِ فَقَدْ آمِنَ مِنْ عَذَابِ 
that La ilaha illallah is uh, my fortress. And so whoever says La ilaha illallah with sincerity, in, in truth, has entered my fortress, and whoever enters my fortress indeed is safe from my wrath, from my punishment. So say La ilaha illallah with sincerity, with truthfulness, and practice istiqama in the religion. Be upright, be steadfast, uh, and we will be safe and secure from the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. And that is ultimately the adab of entering Jahannam and uh, abiding therein. The ummah of the Prophet sallallahu will achieve salvation. Qad aflah al Okay, this is wa'ad Allah. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'ad Allah haqq wa man astaqu min Allah qila. And no one's word or promise is truer than that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, <clears throat> so we will achieve salvation in the form of uh, paradise uh, and spiritual proximity um, uh, to, to our Lord. That is the supreme felicity, and it is everlasting. Okay, it does not come to an end, and nothing in this world is worth that salvation. If you go into a random synagogue in the Bay Area, like I have many times, over the last several years, you'll notice that they let the circus in. You know, the circus is in town. If you go into a random church in the Bay Area, you'll notice that they let the circus in. They were pounded into submission by the woke zeitgeist. You know, as Muslims, let's stay our ground. Let's not capitulate to the circus. Let's keep the circus where it belongs, out on the street, not in the masajid, not in our schools, not in our community centers. Let's not drink the Kool-Aid. It's really not worth it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, fi amwalikum anfusikum. Okay, that you will surely be tested in your wealth and in yourselves. And you shall surely hear much hurt from those who are given the book before you, okay, and from those who are idolaters. But if you are patient and if you guard yourselves, then that is indeed a course worthy of resolve. Imam al Tabari the celebrated exeget, he said that that adhan, that hurt here in this ayah, it means taunts and insults, as well as falsehoods and blasphemies about God and his prophets. So these things are expected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says it. Well, there's heavy emphasis in this verb. Indeed, indeed, you will hear these things. These things are expected. This is the nature of the dunya. Uh, the answer isn't to simply relinquish one's principles. Right? The Prophet وسلم, he said, Ummati hadihi ummatun marhuma. This ummah of mine, this ummah of mine is an ummah that has been granted mercy. Its punishment is in this world. And that is, in and of itself, of course, a form of mercy. Therefore, being in Allah's fortress, okay, does not mean uh, that we will not um, experience hardships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am, am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannata wa lamma ya'lam illahu al-lazina wa lamma ya'lam illahu al-lazina jahadu minkum wa ya'lam al-sabirin. Do you think you're going to just enter uh, paradise without experiencing uh, struggle and showing patience? In a hadith recorded by Imam Ahmad in Imam al-Tirmidhi, um, that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was approached, Ya Rasulullah, ayyuhan nas, uh, ayyuhan nas ashaddu bala'an. Which of the people has the most severe experiences, the most severe of tribulations? Qala al-anbiya. He said, the prophets. The prophets. Why is that? Because the prophets teach us how to respond to the most difficult of, of conditions. Okay. Um, it's not because Allah is punishing them. The prophets have isma. Okay, they are divinely protected. It's not punishment for them. Okay, so read the sirah. Read about Mecca. Read about Medina. The Prophet ﷺ had a very, very difficult life. It was one challenge after another, after another. 
But look how he faced it, the grace, the courage, the steadfastness, the trust, the love. Ibn Majah, he records a hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, said, لَقَدْ أُوذِيتُ فِي اللَّهِ وَمَا يُؤْذَ أَحَدٌ وَلَقَدْ أَخِفْتُ فِي اللَّهِ وَمَا يَخَافُ أَحَدٌ I have been tortured for the sake of Allah as no one else has. And I have suffered fear for the sake of Allah as no one else has. Okay, and don't forget, his station is, is the station of the Habib. He's Habibullah. He's the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the highest station. He's the best of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was raising his degrees, okay, and establishing the sunnah of his messenger. Allah teaches us through him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the greatest teacher. Inna I was only sent as a teacher. He teaches us how to properly deal with adversity. He teaches us to be principled and not to obey our passions. Okay, we're going to feel these inclinations, you know, to just, just go with the flow sometimes, to make things easier. Or this feels right. Maybe I should do that. Maybe this is how it's supposed to be. The Prophet وسلم, he teaches us to be principled. He said, وسلم, The intelligent one is he who subdues his nafs, his lower self, and works for that which comes after death. Beautiful hadith. And the unintelligent one is he who puts his lower self in the pursuance of its desires. Okay, and has vain hopes in God. Okay, like someone who says, I hope, I hope to go to Jannah, and then his, his food is, is haram, his, his clothing is haram, he looks at the haram, he listens to the haram, you know, he, he's lax on his prayer, you know, what do you expect? That's, the, you know, tamanni is a, is, a, is a type of hope that is not backed with action. It's not raja, raja is good hope. Raja is hope we, that, that is coupled with action. Right? You have in the Messenger of God a beautiful pattern of conduct for whoever has Raja, hope in Allah and in the final day and makes frequent remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this idea that I hope this and I hope that, but there's no action. It's just someone pursuing their their lusts, their desires, right? And then a lot of these people justify themselves through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the Quran. Many of them are young people, you know, at the university after taking some, you know, intro to philosophy uh, course, they have now deconstructed the text of the Quran and shown how the evil traditional and patriarchal ulama have weaponized uh, the Quran to maintain their power or the oppressed masses. You know, this is just ridiculous. It's, it's nonsense. <laughs> it's really just nonsense. But that's their MO, right? They, they attack the ulama because the ulama stand in the way of them engaging in their immoral and degenerate uh, behavior, right? That's not to say that, you know, there are people who are posing as scholars or people who are, who are bad scholars who are doing things for different motives. But this idea of just like, you know, condemning 1,400 years of scholarship, 1,400 years, thousands of scholars, they're all wrong. They've all misread the Quran. I mean, such arrogance. They all got it wrong. This is what the Quran really means, right? This is called radical hermeneutics, and it advocates this idea that there is no normative or orthodox interpretation of any sacred text. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us, protect our children, um, from such things. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us istiqamah uh, in our religion um, and to in increase us in knowledge, to increase us in confidence um, and to be able to share this religion in a way that is appealing to the heart and to the mind, which is really the same thing in our tradition, right? Um, uh, and to appeal to people on a personal level and let them see, let them see the uh, the tradition as something that is not only relevant, but something that is good, something that can help them, right? Something that 
and benefits them in both worlds. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.